that, that means then, if you think about it, that when you blow the bubble, you're in some way storing energy. You're storing, well, there must be a potential energy because there doesn't seem to be anything moving with large velocity. So you're storing a potential energy, and it's on the surface of the bubble. It's actually a tension, similar to pulling a spring. If you pull a spring, you know, not one of those ones that you use in the physics department that only um, perhaps compress, but if you pull it, then you've got a tension, and then you let go, it snaps back. Right? So similarly, the surface of this bubble has a tension, and when I let go there, it's like letting go of the spring, and I allow that potential energy to transfer to kinetic. Um, so that's the story in terms of energy. <coughs> The story in terms of forces then is a little bit more tricky, and this is where I don't want to go into the details because I want to show you some optics, and I'll go into a lot of details. You wish I didn't go into so much detail, perhaps, with the optics. Um, for the forces involved, you have to imagine that for any liquid, there are attractive forces and repulsive forces. And the attractive forces tend to be very weak at long distances, and then the repulsive forces are very strong at short distances. And it's the balance between the two that defines the density and all that kind of business. Chemists would know a lot more about that. Um, when the soap bubble, but uh, if you just look at the surface of the bubble then, that it has a certain thickness, it means that there's an asymmetry. There's a difference between the ones on the top and the ones that are in there. Because the ones that are in there have attractions and repulsions from all around. And the ones on the top and the bottom of the film only have attractions and repulsions in one direction, below where the film is, nothing up above, apart from the collisions from the air atoms. And it's that difference between the two that makes them special. You have to put energy in to make a soap film. So to bring more soap up to the surface, more of the molecules, more of the water and the soap up to the surface, you have to do work, you have to add energy, and that stores in the potential. Another interesting thing that I'm not going to go into too is that rather counterintuitively, the bigger bubbles have lower gas pressure inside. So if I let go, it doesn't really deflate very quickly. And I could stay there for a very, very long time and not much would happen. And then as it got smaller and smaller and smaller, slowly, uh, suddenly it would just suddenly rush out. So I can show that to you by... I'm getting extra bubbles. So if I just do that and let go, it happens very, very quickly compared to the big bubble. Something extra for you to look at. Anyway. Plateau took all of this into consideration. He came up with some rules. And the rules are on the list there. And this was purely observation. He was just looking really, really hard. It wasn't really any complicated mathematics. He didn't think about it too much in terms of forces. But he wasn't looking because he was blind. He was feeling around and he had people t telling him what was going on. And he uh, took those observations and drew some conclusions. So those rules there are called plateau rules. They have very, very interesting consequences, which I'm just going to show you. I'm not going to try and explain it too much, because as, as I said, we're going to do that in depth a little later on. Now, our technician, Rick, from the physics department, made all of, all of this stuff. He made this for me, he made this, and he made these two. So I'm indebted to him for the help, otherwise this wouldn't be possible. I'm going to dip this in now, and when I pull it out, you might expect there to be films just on the flat equilateral triangles on the surface, right? Just like you, you saw a film that was a circle because we used a circular net, you'd be surprised. Oh, yeah, it comes out like that. And if you look at Plateau's rules, this has both examples of the rules within the one from. Can everyone see that okay? Yeah? If you look at. Uh, I forget the numbers of the rules, but the third one, that the films meet in threes and they do sort of an angle 120. Well, it's this one, this one, and this one meet at 120. The um, borders, which are the edges of the films, they meet in fours, and you can see the, uh, now it's pop, number two pop, right? And you can see the four different edges meeting at the magic angle 109.47, if you know about chemistry and water and various other things, that those numbers mean a lot to chemists. So that's called the tetrahedral angle, and you can see it meeting in fours there. Can you see the shapes okay? I was worried about the lighting in here, is that all right? Yeah. Now here's a very interesting thing, if I pop one of these, then there suddenly emerges a net force on the film, and it readjusts. It's very tempting at this stage as, as a scientist to try and personify bubbles, to try and say things like, it tries to or it wants to do this. And obviously that's nonsense, right? It just does it. It doesn't try and do anything. It's just a soap film. 
<laughs> you, have a, you have a look at it. And it's very tempting when you see it move to say, oh, well, it's trying to minimize its surface energy or some, some nonsense like that, but that's not what's going on. It's just moving because there are forces on it. And you see a different, beautiful shape. It's accelerating because there are forces on it. And if I pop another film, we just get one, and then it's gone. Right? Another consequence, what if I don't pop them? What if I add some? So there's my film. Got uh, quite a few there, but I can drop another one on top, like this. It's rather surprising. Uh, no, it didn't work. <laughs> it was more surprising for me, it didn't work. A pyramid. And it's not really a pyramid if you think about it. If you look at the rules, it can't be a pyramid because where they meet at the point, that always has to be 180 degrees. So it can never strictly be a pyramid, but it arcs round and it's all, it's all nice. So they, there you go, there's the uh, regular one. There's a pyramid inside. Now I'm going to try something that, that sometimes doesn't work. But if I pop one of the films, it readjusts. I pop a second, it readjusts. And this bubble that you thought was a pyramid bubble, after all, is just a regular one. Hey. Oh. <laughs> so, secondly, the cube. I only got him to do the pyramid and the cube. I thought the other platonic solids were a little bit too tricky. <laughs> we put this one in. Oh, not quite. There you go. You got a square in there instead. And it's just a consequence of where the film has to start. It has to start on all the edges of the net. And then it's a consequence of those rules that I said I'm not going to try and explain. If I try very carefully before it pops, I can change where that square has popped. I can change where that square is. It could be in this plane. If I shake it hard enough and try and make that square into a point, well, you can't have points if, if you look at the rules. So it shifts. It doesn't want to. It just does it. It shifts maybe over into that plane, maybe over into that plane. And it, it's, that's a rather interesting consequence, too. Let me try. I think I'm not getting the top surface sometimes. There you go. So I'm going to try and shake it. Nobody breathe. Try and get that square to go into a point. Not happening. Doesn't want to. <laughs> there you go. Now it's back over that side. Yeah, so it's, it's gone round from being in that plane to suddenly switching into that plane because I brought that square into a point by jiggling it. And that's, that's not permitted by Plateau's laws. Um, other interesting consequences of using a um, cube is that you can get a cube. So there's a cube bubble now, and we play the same game. So I pop one, pop one of these, and we can now get a square. And uh, it's not, it, it's, it's gone again. So it's hard to get it again. Um, and if I pop the square. I get an even stranger shape, which I can actually put my hand through. <laughs> and that's fine. Pop another one, and if I pop two, but there by accident. So that's the cube. That was due to Rick, that was very good at him. Um, so that's the shapes. The, the idea then is that if you follow those rules, and if you think about the forces, that uh, are on the surface of the film compared to inside the film. And, and you try and orientate the film in any position you like, and sometimes what you like can't happen because of the shape that you like has a net force. And then the film accelerates in that particular direction until it reaches an equilibrium point. And that's what happens. So that's the um, shape of them. I now want to concentrate on the color of the films. And this is where the bulk of the talk is going to be. And the colour of the films is, is very interesting because you get a whole series of different colours. I'm going to uh, just show you with this slide. I'm not going to put it over there yet. I'm just going to show you this slide. And I'll turn it so that everybody can see. Can you see? You'll be able to, some people can see it at any given time. And then when I turn it, other people suddenly are able to see it. Yeah? Nobody can. Blank faces from everybody. No one can see. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, good, good.